Jesus is Lord. And he was such a nice Jewish boy. Jesus changed my life. And he's still in the life-changing business. As Paul said, the love of Christ compels me. You know, Randy, I think most people don't realize how much darkness there is in it, the world. It can't be just coming to church and getting pumped up with a you faith. And I are all going to have to have something of faith in us. Jesus which we died stay. to save sinners, and you are a sinner. Shalom and welcome again to Crosstalk. My name is Randy Weiss. And if, if I had my way, we would all be out there changing the world, announcing the love of God and the coming of the Messiah. And you know what? I'd like to have my way. I believe we all should attempt to do those things. We shouldn't be afraid of thinking that way. Back in the early 1980s, a very dear friend of mine, uh, Harley Coulterman, he and I uh, launched out in a world band radio program with the notion of changing the world, announcing the coming of the Messiah. And Harley and I are both still dear friends and still trying to change the world, and we're still <laughs> together after all yeah, these years. Absolutely. Harley, welcome to Crosstalk, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, we can share with our audience that uh, there's things that can be done to go out there and make a difference. We don't have yes. to be afraid. We don't have to hold back. Amen. My pastor, Dr. Lesha Summerall, used to say, you know, a man that can find one friend in his lifetime is a really, really blessed person. And I feel like we've had that kind of a friendship and it's been really a, a blessing to be on the journey with you. Sometimes we've been more connected than others, but we got off to a kind of an interesting start, you know? Yes, amen. I don't think those programs were probably real good, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, that uh, in a way, uh, I don't believe in purgatory. But I think for a preacher, purgatory would be listening to his old sermons. Maybe. <laughs> Some of them would be pretty, pretty scary. I'm sure. You know, my <laughs> wife used to say to me, have you listened to that one yet? <laughs> so I think she was trying to tell me something. But, you know, it's, it's, it's true that, that uh, I think a lot of us who want to be involved in ministry, but we're not exactly sure how, we think that we can't. We think that right. we're prohibited. We think that it's for those other guys or those big guys or those rich guys. But we weren't big, we weren't rich, we weren't, and we're not. Yes. But there's things that we can all do, and God will make a way if you yield to Him and just ask Him, what do you want me to do next? Yeah, and the amazing thing was, men like Dr. Lester Summerall gave us an opportunity to do it, even if they whatever they might have thought about what we were doing. Yeah. They said, you know, go for it, you know. If you can come up for some cash to do the production and, you know, put this program on, hey, have at it, go for it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I remember so clearly uh, sitting down with you in front of the microphone and putting these meager programs together. They were pretty, um, they, they weren't sophisticated, but you no. know what? They didn't need to be. We did right. the best we could with what we had to work with, and then we left it in God's hands. Right. And people can still do that. And today, with the yes. internet, yes, absolutely, everyone can have a voice. Yeah, it's a new world. It's a new world. I thank God that all these years later, God is still allowing us to go out into the world, into mm -hmm. the marketplace, and share the same message that we've been sharing throughout our Christian lives right. that Jesus is Lord. He changed my life and he's still in the life-changing business. <laughs> Amen. It never yeah, gets good. old. Yes. Well, we were reaching the whole world then, really, or a lot of the world, you yeah. know, through that shortwave radio broadcast. I mean, it was amazing that we could touch nations and get letters back from, That's right. from places that some, sometimes I'd never heard of before, you know. It was, uh, it was amazing. But yes, God has opened the whole world to us, and now by internet and other things, even more so. Back in the, uh, in the early 80s, in the late 70s, in the early 70s, um, we, we used to work with the underground church in, in different ways and, mm -hmm. and travel to different countries and produce materials to give away in different parts of the world. And uh, that, that, uh, that has always stuck with me as... Uh, something for which I'm deeply, deeply thankful. And uh, when the Iron Curtain came down, my interest in working in communist countries waned because there were so many different people who were then going right. in and it became much easier for people. Uh, we share another 
deep love, and that is for working with the oppressed people in a different communist country, but in the nation of Cuba. We both mm -hmm. work extensively in Cuba, and I would love for you to be able to share with our audiences about the work in Cuba, because it's such a ripe yeah. mission field. Well, it's just amazing to go there. I mean, I went there at the invitation of, uh, of another brother and mentor, Pastor Larry Stockstill, uh, went actually with a couple of his people who were planting churches there. And um, I just found it to be really amazing because everywhere we went, uh, everywhere that uh, these brothers were preaching, uh, the places were filled up. They were filled up with excited people uh, who were engaged. They weren't chewing gum on the front row and kind of <laughs> going to sleep during the message. And they were attentive. Uh, we spoke to pastors, young pastors who were just planting churches, a lot of them house churches, who were just really, really excited about the gospel and about the things that Jesus had done in their lives. And in spite of some hardships and some difficulties and uh, some maybe lack of things, you know, they were just really vibrant and on fire for God. And I really, really loved that about Cuba and about the Cuban people. It was just really, we were welcomed. Uh, we were, they, they wanted to hear, they They're wanted a, to grow. A, a tender people yes. and an open people. There are people who have been softened by the oppression of their own government. They have been softened they have been sensitized, and for so many, they have been hidden from the simple love of God, the simple truth of who God is and what He does, so that when they do hear, God is prepared to just open their hearts. Yes. They're so ready to receive. Well, it's wonderful to see, too, that now uh, they're allowed to do many things that they that maybe previously were not allowed uh, you know you can have a house church you can open it in any neighborhood and so forth and so on of course there's regulation and so forth but um, there's a there's a big openness to receiving the gospel and really I never really felt like I know there were probably minders and other things uh, going on in services and stuff but I didn't really feel the oppression of of anything and we were free to preach the gospel. We were free to talk uh, in, in, to people, individuals. And the amazing thing is the mass of people, you know, if you drive into Havana at midnight uh, from some other town or some other area of Cuba, uh, lining the seawall, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of young kids just all the way along the seawall. It's true. Just waiting, waiting for somebody to talk to them, somebody to, to, to share with them. And uh, so, I mean, it's a, really, really is a, is a huge, hugely great experience to, to reach those people. It is a, a mission field that is white for the harvest. Yes. Unfortunately, as scripture has declared, uh, laborers are few. Right. That's the only thing that's lacking are laborers. Uh, we, we have to take a short break, but when we come back, I want you to hear more about the incredible work that God is doing in the island nation of Cuba. Please stay tuned. 